Hello, welcome to our lesson today. We're gonna learn to construct and interpret two-way tables. Let's review some vocabulary. So a two-way table is a table that shows the observed number of frequency for two variables. The rows in the table indicate one category and the columns indicate the other category. So for example, you may be looking at whether somebody is male or female and whether they prefer vanilla or chocolate ice cream. It requires that you have two different pieces of data from each person that was surveyed. So whether or not they're male or female, they had to answer that question, and whether or not they prefer vanilla or ch chocolate ice cream is the second. You could have male or female and then vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. It's not required that there's two answers. You have to have two pieces of information. So it could be, are you male or female? And then you could give them five different ice creams that they, flavors that they wanna pick from, keeping in mind it's two different categories. So bivariate data is when you study two different variables. So sometimes a two-way table is referred to as a bivariate data table. In a bivariate data table or a two-way table, you have joint frequencies. It's when you join one variable from a row with a variable from a column, meaning this person said that they were male and that they liked chocolate ice cream. This is the number of males that were surveyed that liked chocolate ice cream. So it joins two parts of the categories. Marginal frequency is the total of a sum of a row or the column. Okay, or it could represent the total number of people surveyed in the table. So it's the number of males that were surveyed or the number of people surveyed that like vanilla ice cream. So when you talk about a marginal frequency, there aren't two pieces of data. There's not two descriptors in your with attached to your number or your value. A survey is when you ask many people, okay, or a series a question or a series of questions in order to gather information about what most people think about something. So you're try usually trying to show a relationship or an opinion about something. So let's go over a two-way table that displays the two gap categories of data collected from the same source. So we randomly surveyed students in your school about their grades on the last test and whether or not that they studied for their test. So they were asked two different questions. Okay, did you study or did you not study? And then did you pass or did you fail? So they had to answer two questions. Each entry in this table is gonna be referred to as a joint frequency, okay? So here's our table. We make one, our rows are gonna be, right here in our column is whether, our rows, not sorry, our rows are whether they passed or whether they failed. Our columns studied or did not study. So let's see what happened. So. This number right here is 21 students passed and studied. So notice that there's two pieces of information that I have to say when I say what 21 is represented by. 21 students passed and studied. Two students passed and did not study. One student failed and studied. And six students failed and did not study. So these are what we call joint frequencies because when you describe the value, you must say two different variables, past, studied. Okay. So now let's see if you can interpret this. The question is asking, how many of the students in the survey studied for the test and passed? Pause and let you think about that. Okay. So when we look at studied, we go to our studied column and then we go to past. So studied and passed, 21 students studied and passed their test. Now let's talk about marginal frequencies. Remembering that marginal frequencies were the total of a row or a column or the total number of people represented in the bivariate data study. So here you're going to see that we fill this in. This is a marginal frequency. It totals the row. So 23 students passed. Noticing that when I talk about a marginal frequency, there's only one piece of data represented here. 23 passed. 
seven, the total of this row, is seven students failed. Then we're going to total this column, which is the total number of students who studied. So 22 students surveyed studied. Eight students did not study. And then we have a total of 30 students who were surveyed. So we, you heard my descriptors. This is how you would describe if somebody asked you to interpret. So if I'm asked to find the marginal frequencies, I'm adding this column and this row onto my bivariate or two-way data table. If I'm asked to interpret it, I'm using my words. So 23 students passed, seven students failed, 22 students studied, eight students did not study, and 30 students were surveyed. So the difference between finding and interpreting. So your turn. I am provided you with a data table. Randomly surveyed students in a cafeteria about their plans for a football game. So it's random. And we are asking whether or not they're going to the football game and a school dance. And the table shows the results. So I'd like you to pause this video and go ahead and answer part A and part B. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So for part A, you're asked how many students will attend the dance but not the football game. So I'm going to go to dance and say attend and then I'm going to go to not attend the football game. So I have five students. Five students are attending the dance but not attending the football game. So finding and interpreting the marginal frequencies for the survey. Here we go. So you notice I've added a row and I've added a column and I've totaled every row and I've totaled every column. So over here, we're going to interpret. So this is finding and then down here is interpreting. So 40 students attended the dance. 36 students will not attend the dance. 51 students attended the football game and 25 students will not attend the football game. A total of 76 students were surveyed. All right, now I'd like you to create a two-way table. So here is the data that was collected. Students were asked, did they ride the bus or do they not ride the bus? And what age range were they in? And then the data was collected as students were asked with tally marks, noting that this is a group of five. So you'd read this 5, 10, 15, 24. So 24 students ages 12 to 13 ride the bus. So I would like you to create a data table understanding that your two dare, um, that you have ride the bus or does not ride the bus and then you're going to have three rows or three columns representing age. Keeping in mind riding or not riding the bus could be rows or columns and ages could be rows or columns. So it's it's interchangeable. So go ahead and pause the video, set up your data table and include joint and marginal frequencies in your data table and then go ahead and interpret. So you're going to find and interpret. So create your data table with marginal and joint frequencies and then interpret both the joint and marginal frequencies. Good luck. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, welcome back. So the two categories here, we have the students answers of riding or not riding the bus and then age groups. I have the three age groups. Again, you could have put the ages over here as the rows and the students as the columns. Okay, so just keep in mind that that's okay. So I went and tallied my number and riding the bus like the 24 came from here. They rode the bus and they were 12 to 13, 12, 14 to 15 year olds. And we had 14, 16 to, 15, 16 to 17 year olds that rode the bus. Then doesn't ride the bus, 12 to 13, I had 16. Over here I had 13, 14 to 15 year olds. And last I had the 21, okay? Here, those are my joint frequencies. Adding my marginal frequencies, 50 students rode the bus. So if I add up all these tally marks or all this row, 50 students rode the bus. 
does not ride the bus would be all of these tally marks or tallying up, tallying up the row of joint frequencies here for a marginal frequency of 50. For a total of 100 students surveyed, 50 plus 50 is 100. Then I can tally up or total my 12 to 13 year olds, which means I would take this 24 and add this 16 and get 40, 25, 14 to 15 year olds, and then 35, 16 to 17 year olds, noticing that this total uh, row adds up to the total column for 100 students surveyed. So let's go on here and talk about whether or not students in grades six, seven, and eight pack a lunch or buy a lunch. Okay, so I would like you to pause the video, create your two-way table, and interpret your joint marginal frequencies, and come back and check your work. Good luck. Welcome back. So here's the two-way table I created. Again, I put lunch, pack, or buy on the left side representing the rows, and the grade six, seven, or eight along the top representing my columns, but these are interchangeable. So you could have had three rows and two columns here for your joint. So using my data, 11 sixth grade students pack their lunch and nine grade six students buy. And keep going, 23 packed for grade seven, 27 bought, 16 grade eight students packed their lunch and 14 grade eight students bought. Adding up my number of packed lunches, that was 50 students and then adding up my row of buy, and that was 50 for a total of six, uh, 26th grade students, 57th grade students, and 38th grade students, 100 students surveyed. So let's review that written. So if you're asked to write this on an assessment or a homework assignment, remembering these are my joint frequencies, 11 grade six students packed to lunch, and you can check your work there. And then my marginal frequencies are the totals of my rows and my columns and the total number of students surveyed. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more as my videos come out or give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Thanks for joining.